So item potency is one of the most critical things to consider while designing an API or a microservice. In this video, I'll walk you through what item potency is, why do we need it and more importantly take a look at an approach of implementing item potency. There are multiple ways of doing it. I've In this video, I've talked about one good common approach of implementing item potency. But obviously it is very subjective and it depends on the problem statement that you have. But this will solidify your understanding on 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 how to implement item potence in general. So what exactly is an item potence? To put it very simply, it's like, like you say that your API endpoint or your service is item potent, when if you execute the same operation multiple times, the result of multiple execution of that operation is same as, as if that operation was run just once. To put it very simply, on Instagram, when you're scrolling feed, you like the you 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 like the photo, so you double tapped it. As soon as you double tapped it, the like count increases by one. Now, no matter how many times you double tap it, no matter how many times the backend API call goes, the like count doesn't change. This is exactly what it means when we say that API is item potent. No matter if that API is called one times, hundred times, one thousand times, the resultant outcome of that API is always going to be your count overall increase just by one right this although this is a very crude example of looking at it things become very serious when money is involved let's say you let's say we build a bank let's say we build a payment service in which your user a wants to pay user b twenty thousand dollars right so then there must be an api on which you invoke this slash pay slash b slash twenty thousand which then which then does the transaction between the two user Right now, here what we definitely do not want is if this API invoke uh, twice, like if if due to retry due to anything, if we invoke this API twice, we don't want the amount to be deducted twice from A's account and get created into B's account. Right, so this becomes very critical that because like to ensure that no bug can let this transaction happen twice, right? So here, what we need is we need item potence, right? So other places where this is extremely relevant is user to not tweet the same tweet again. Like for example, on Twitter, you see this tweet button, you type something and let's say instead of clicking, you double clicked it. This would have fired two API calls in the backend. We don't want that to happen give one time only one tweet goes and while the other doesn't happen, right? We want to make that thing item potent. How can we do that? Like that's exactly what we'll be discussing. Not placing the same order twice on Amazon. On Amazon, once you add to the cart, you say place order. If hypothetically, let's say your Amazon pay has enough balance to support two orders, you'll just click, click. Let's say you double click and the order placed, like the same order placed twice on Amazon. Same thing goes for any food delivery app or something. Then, not sending the same message again. Let's say you are on chat application, you typed a nice message and then you, instead of clicking, you actually double clicked it or maybe because of bug, maybe because of retry, you clicked again or that transition got invoked again. You would be sending the same message to that other person twice. Right? So basically the overall gist is whenever there is a possibility of you doing that same thing twice due to retries, explicit issue, bug or something, you should not want to do that. That's what item potence is all about, right? So although we guarantee, although we also have to guarantee item potence while handling the API call, but in order to ensure key, how to even weave that solution together, we'll take a look into that approach. So first, before we jump into implementation, let's understand why would a transaction repeat? So this typically happens when we retry because if there is no reason for us to retry, the transaction is going to be in the book just once. Right? And this retry could be because of double click that user made. So try to prevent that because of an API failure that might have happened, you retry that. I'll take an example of API failure, which is much more prevalent on what exactly happened. So let's say I have a payment service and a payment gateway. So this payment gateway is something on which you send request key from A to B. I want to transfer money and in one shot transfer happens. Hypothetically, I'm, I'm just I'm just simplifying the example over here. 
right so let's say a payment service wants to like you got a request that a wants to transfer twenty thousand dollars to b right so payment service made a request to payment gateway and payment gateway when it gets the request it would immediately immediately transfer a to b twenty thousand dollars like hypothetically that's what the job of a payment gateway is in this example right so when the request came into the payment gateway payment gateway started processing it because it got the request so then here it process the payment which means it it did the transfer where it deducted money from a's account and created to b's account and then it sent a response this response ne never reached the user could be two possible reasons first of all that the response generally did not reach the user because of a network partitioning that happens or a network outage that happens or otherwise the payment service crashed because of a transient issue right and once this service got back up it retried the transaction after recovery. So it retried it because it saw that, hey, this payment is not processed. Let me retry it. So then it retried due to some business logic that you might have applied some async workers or something. Right? So either payment service retried or payment gateways response was not reached to the payment service. In either case, what payment service was doing is payment services retrying. So once it recovered or once it once it knew that, hey, I did not get the response. So, hey, let me retry it because, you know, we all know that, hey, retry in microservice synchronous communication. Let's retry upon failure. That's and, and let's say hypothetically, if you apply that because you don't want to have to give user a poor user experience. So you try to retry on your JavaScript side or on your Android apps or on your iOS side only. Right. So you fire the same request again. It goes to the payment gateway payment gateway processes the payment again which is where the problem lies because now instead of transferring for twenty thousand dollars from a to b we transferred forty thousand dollars as in twenty thousand dollars twice from a to b so a literally lost twice the money and b gained twice the money right so by retrying this we yeah like this is the classical case why we want item potence in the flow where if the same request is hit again, we should not be processing it, right? So let's take let's take a look at two approaches of implementing item potence. Uh, the first one, which most people typically don't think about, is you won't need item potence if we do not retry. So there are like basically there is no compulsion that hey every API you write needs to be item potent. Because to, in order to implement item potent, you have to make extra checks on the backend side, extra checks on the frontend side. In most cases, you don't need it. You don't need to have retry. You do not need to have automatic retries. What you can actually do is depending on if, if, your, if your product, uh, if in your product or on your use case, you can throw an error to a user if something fails instead of automatically retrying it. Do that, right? For example, on Instagram, let's say you double tap the photo, right? <clears throat> and then if due to some reason your API call failed, throw error to the user. Now, why do you want to do automatic retry? Because the root cause of you, you having to make item potent API calls is because you are retrying. If there is no, if you can build a system without having a need of retry, then do that so that it avoids the need of item potence altogether. So this is something that I definitely wanted to add because most people think, hey, let me design the best API out there with all item potence and all best things. You don't need that to be honest in most cases. So you be your own judge. You be the judge of the things that you are building. Make that sane call on if you really need item potence, then you build it. I'm not denying that. But if you do not need it, just throw an error to the user, let the user explicitly retry that. For example, if the payment transaction failed, where this API call failed, propagate this error to the user saying that, hey, the, the transition couldn't happen, reinitiate the transition. So, so, so then the user will go through the entire flow and then make the payment. Right? So that's a better way of doing it where you are not doing an implicit retry, but rather an explicit retry on the user's part. So user is happy, you are happy. Why, why to even worry about item potence? Like that's how, by the way, that's how real systems are built. You don't need to make every single API item potent. It's good to have item potent, but you do not need, you, you, you do not have to make every API item potent. So think twice before implementing and see if you really need it, then only go for it. Okay. Now coming, to, now addressing the elephant in the room, how do we implement item potence? So this is, 
one of the most popular approaches of implementing IDA portents, where it's obviously very common as well, where you say that, hey, check and update, which means that you would retry or you would update the entry or your backend system would do it only when you know that the first transaction definitely failed. Otherwise, you would do it. Right. So in this case, what you can do is, in, in, the, in, in the case of payment, what you can do is, you can get the status of the payment and then retry only when it is not processed. Right. Otherwise, you won't do it. But what does this mean? This means that we need to have something that strings our session together. That strings how your payments, your payment get when everyone is talking in sync. Ki, hey, this was the payment that I wanted to, like, for example, you need to identify that what payment was going on, what was that unique identification that, that helps you weave your payment from A to B of $20,000 weave together across all services. So that's where what we need is we need a unique identifier. Let's, let's call it payment ID, right? So this is something that would weave all of your API calls together and the flow goes, flow is extremely simple and it goes like this. What you do is your payment service generates or rather pings payment gateway to generate a payment ID. Your payment gateway sends the payment ID to this payment service. Now this payment ID is something that can you definitely would propagate to your end user side will keep it along with your payment service in its own database and the payment gateway anyway has it in its own database. Right. So at three places, this payment ID, this payment ID will weave the all the three stages of transaction in one shot. So your user as in your JavaScript client or Android has this one payment ID, which was sent to it by payment service. Payment service stores it if needed, stores it in its own database and payment gateway keeps a check of it with respect to the actual payment being processed. Right. So this one, this one ID weaves all the three systems together. Right. I'm just oversimplifying it. If I would highly encourage you to implement it. It's not really difficult to do so and just add failures to it and you'll see the magic behind this. Right. So the first step is you generate a common ID that weaves all the, all the three stages together. Second, now what would happen is instead of just saying that, Hey, transfer $20,000 from A to B, you say, transfer $20,000 from A to B for this payment ID, right? So P1729 is hypothetically, let's say payment ID. And then when it hits, like this is something that we got from the user, this payment ID came to the payment service, payment service passed the same ID to payment gateway saying that, hey, for this payment ID, I'm making the transaction of A to B $20,000, right? And now let's say payment gateway process the transaction. Right. When then after it sent a response, the, either the response did not reach the user or the or the service crash, the, 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 the same error situation that we saw before. So now what would happen? Now your payment service would retry. Right? Either this retry starts from your payment service or it starts from your end user, but it's an automatic retry where uh, which is where we need to guarantee item potency. Right? So because the payment was processed over here, <coughs> now when the retry happens. So retry, like because we are sending in the same request. In first request, what we sent A to B twenty thousand. Here I've written two thousand, but basically assume that it's twenty thousand dollars. Let me just make that alteration to not confuse people. Let's say twenty thousand dollars and twenty thousand dollars. Okay. So because we are replaying the same request again, we are retrying the same request again. What we would get is we'll say like transfer A from A to B twenty thousand dollars with the same payment ID because we are not generating another payment ID. We are retrying the failed risk. Uh, we are retrying the failed request. So P with 729, we pass this request ID. The here, when the request is reached to the payment gateway, payment gateway would check, hey, what's the status of P1729? It would say, hey, it was already processed. So then it would send a response already completed or already processed, right? So no matter how many times your payment service invokes the same API to initiate the same transfer. If the transfer is already done, it would not redo the transaction, right? So by weaving all the three stages over this one payment ID is something that 
has helped us make our API design item potent. And this is one of the most popular ways of implementing item potents, which is why in real, in actual uh, payment gateways also, you would see something very similar to this. So if you ever integrate Stripe, PayPal, or uh, let's say Razorpay into your stack, you would see that at every stage, it gives you that one ID that weaves your entire payment together. And that is the first thing that you do when you initiate a transaction. That's exactly the first response you get. And whenever you would want to do anything, you pass in this particular ID. Right. So this is exactly how all payment systems are built by weaving multiple internal microservices or external data flows together through one common identifier. Right. And if you'd want to ever implement this, it's extremely simple to implement this thing locally and mimic the failures and see how it actually works where you cannot or where you would not reprocess the payment again. And obviously, as I mentioned before, also, there are multiple checks that you would have to put it in the back end, depending on the database you have, depending on the data flow you have. But this is the overall idea of implementing item potents by weaving the three systems together using a common identifier. Right. Nice. Yeah. Whew, chalo. Basically, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new. I hope I, I like I hope now you understand how to build robust APIs, robust idempotent APIs by weaving all the services or all the microservices together with the common ID. So yeah, if you guys like this video, give this video a thumbs up. If you guys like the channel, give this channel a sub and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.